Hello everybody and welcome back to the ACC YouTube channel. This is JJ once again. Uh, for you guys, uh, if you've been checking out our channel lately, you saw that we've done some content on the F2A85 series of motherboards, or specifically the 85 chipset, along with the latest generation of APUs uh, that are coined as the Trinity APUs. Now the cool thing about this chipset and uh, the CPU, or the APU, is that this actual Virgo platform has some really nice graphics horsepower embedded within it. It's actually about twice as fast as the previous generation Lano APU. And what that brings to the table is a whole other level of gameplay experience. Experience. Now, you're going to see a lot of different reviews around that it show you gameplay experiencing, uh, comparing, you know, the discrete level graphics that you could have, let's say on a, you know, 7850 or, you know, a 7870 or a 7900 series product and AAA titles like Skyrim and Battlefield 3 and things like that. And that's great. You know, definitely if you're looking for an awesome gameplay experience, we've got the entire range of AMD 7000 series graphics cards to be able to give you an awesome gaming experience uh, with the highest level of resolutions and AA and image quality settings. But with Trinity, one of the really cool things that we've found here in our testing is that it can enable a whole level of gameplay for different types of titles that you don't necessarily always look at, but there's a lot of people that enjoy and play. You know, sometimes people refer to these as casual gameplay titles, but they can be really cool in terms of the actual, their look and their feel, their gameplay mechanics, uh, the overall visual uh, structure in terms of how the game's laid out and things along those lines. So what we're going to be doing here is giving you a little bit of kind of a crash course on what's kind of the performance expectation of what you can get from some titles that have come out this year and maybe a couple that are a little bit older and see actually how they play on this platform and also how some of our key technologies uh, can actually enable a better gameplay experience. Specifically our support for the new AMD memory standard uh, that's coined AMP uh, memory profile as well as how we can take the graphics core inside of the APU processor and actually have it process uh, at a faster speed or technically overclock it to be able to give you a higher level of frame rate uh, through our exclusive GPU boost technology. So we're going to quickly show you actually how to enable GPU boost, what's kind of a, the performance expectation that you might be able to see from just running your system stock and without GPU boost enabled to then having the whole shebang enabled, which is having AMP enabled along with GPU boost and how that relays uh, to ultimately give you a better gameplay experience with some cool games. We already gone ahead and actually run a baseline test for you. So the board was set up at 100% full UEFI defaults, no overclock to the actual APU graphics core, and the memory running at a default 1333. Now you can see here, uh, we've gone ahead and run actually uh, Street Fighter 4 benchmark, and we have actually a pretty good result. Um, it already goes to show you that the Trinity graphics core is actually pretty robust um, in terms of the performance gameplay that it can offer for you at actually a pretty high resolution. Most gamers are right now playing um, at a 1680 by 1050 or 1920 by 1080. We went ahead and actually set the setting a little bit higher, 1900 by 1200 in terms of the display setting, and as you can see, it gave us an overall frame rate of about 41.50. Uh, um, so pretty solid actually in terms of the gameplay performance you would definitely have a smooth and fluid experience but uh, let's go ahead and actually show you how you can take advantage of being able to give you actually faster frame rate and overall better fluidity and a better gameplay experience by enabling AMP memory profile on our board as well as taking advantage of our exclusive GPU boost technology to go ahead and overclock the APU graphics score so that we can get a faster frame rate. So here we're just going to give you a quick breakdown on how you can actually enable GPU boost. Um, so there's two options. We've actually gone ahead and brought up our AI Suite 2, which you can generally bring up uh, as long as you've used our installation disk that comes included with the motherboard by double clicking on the icon in the system tray, or of course you can launch it from your applications. Now from here, I could go ahead and actually click on this auto-tuning button. And there's going to be two options. One will be fast and extreme. Uh, these are both uh, overclocking mechanisms that will dynamically overclock the APU graphics core as well as your system. Um, fast will be a quick one uh, button preset. It's the same exact function as our TPU switch on on motherboard. Uh, with extreme uh, being actually a more dynamic process which will overclock the system based on the memory that you have and the CPU cooler that you have. So it will vary uh, being a more aggressive overclock. Now for you guys that maybe don't want to do all that, uh, even though it's very simple in terms of one click and executing these dynamic overclocks uh, or the basic preset by using fast, you can actually also head over um, to the manual mode and under the manual mode you'll see a button that says GPU boost. Uh, from there, all you would have to do is select uh, one of two options. So you can see that right now we're at default and you can then click over into turbo or you could click over to extreme. Once you do that, you would just hit apply 
and the system will tell you that it needs to reboot to go ahead and apply this new graphics overclock and from there you'd be good to go. Uh, so with that we're going to quickly go ahead and reboot the system, jump into the UEFI and show you how to do this from within the UEFI environment. So we've gone ahead and headed into the UEFI and we've head over to the advanced section uh, and then from there gone to AI Tweaker. From there all we're going to need to do is go ahead and go over to GPU Boost and select Extreme hit F10 and then reboot the system. That's all you're going to need to do to be able to overclock the actual APU graphics score and you're good to go. And just like we also talked about within the operating system, if you also wanted to quickly dynamically overclock your system but not want to use the software, uh, once again I make note that you could be using the TPU switch that's on the physical motherboard um, or you could go ahead and select OC Tuner press OK and that would also quickly dynamically overclock your system, although it wouldn't be as dynamic and as aggressive as the extreme auto-tuning option that we have within the operating system. So with that, we're going to go ahead and load up our presets that we've already set, taking advantage of the new AMP memory speed, as well as setting uh, our GPU boost to extreme, hopping back over into the operating system and running through a couple of games to show you the gameplay experience that we can have by taking advantage of these two uh, technologies on our motherboard. But just to give you that baseline comparison to give you an indicator of what GPU Boost can do for you along with taking advantage of uh, the AMP memory that we're utilizing, that Patriot 1866 um, and that bandwidth that we're now providing to the Trinity Graphics Core, you can see that we'd be able to substantially increase our overall gameplay performance. So we got a ranking of C at approximately about a little bit over 40 frames as far as our average on the Street Fighter uh, 4 benchmark. And then by utilizing AMP in combination with our GPU Boost technology, we were able to ramp that up to almost 60 frames a second. So a huge increase in the overall improvement to the fluidity and the gameplay experience that you're having, especially in fighting games, uh, Twitch first-person shooters, even even RTS games where you're moving across the map a lot, uh, you keep in mind that this is a composited metric of the average frame rate, but also your minimum frame rate gets a nice overall big boost up so that you're not dropping down below, which is helping to keep the game overall feel more responsive and overall helping to maintain the best gameplay experience. So with that, let's go ahead and actually jump into a couple of games here and show you what some gameplay experience is like on the Trinity Graphics Core with AMP and GPU Boost. Okay guys, we've gone ahead and jumped into Awesome Knots, uh, which is an awesome kind of dynamic, uh, kind of like a capture the flag kind of gameplay dynamic. Um, it's actually running at 2560 by 1440 with full uh, effects all enabled and you can already see, we don't have vertical sync enabled to go ahead and show you the maximum gameplay performance that's potential here on the platform. Uh, and you can see it's quite impressive. We're already at, at 80 frames, uh, 125 frames there. And so we're gonna keep fraps open there. So all you gotta do is just kind of keep an eye there. And we're gonna see if we can show you a little bit of gameplay here. You can see there, even when we had a full amount of units on the screen, we definitely were able to maintain that frame rate. It wasn't even dropping below about 60 frames a second. So overall, really a great gameplay experience. Uh, we've got another game here, which is Death Rally. This is actually uh, another recent title, just actually came out here in 2012. A really cool, actually, racing game. For you guys that actually are a bit of fans of racing games on our consoles, like Twisted Metal, um, this is very similar, but it's actually a top-down racer. Uh, there's a lot of really, actually, cool visual elements within this gameplay in terms of, like, some physics animation, some high-quality uh, textures, and, and things like that going like that. And if you keep your eye in terms of the Fraps menu, you're going to see that, once again, gameplay is pretty much... Uh, locked in at about 60 frames a second, so we're, we're getting a great, once again, gameplay experience from this. All right, so that gives you guys a quick uh, 
gameplay experience and what you would have with uh, Death Rally, which overall I can tell you even uh, when, as you get to the more dynamic stages that are out there, it still maintains an overall very consistent frame rate, uh, pretty much always pegged there at 60 frames. Uh, so you're getting a really smooth, great gameplay experience. And once again, this is actually at native resolution, so this is at 2560 by 1440. So this is really nice to see in terms of the gameplay performance uh, that Trinity is offering you. So from here, let's go ahead and jump into another game. So here we've got another game, a really cool, awesome game uh, in terms of Ors Must Die 2. Um, and we're playing this pretty much in max settings at 1920 by 1080, and you can take a look there at Fraps. Is a, we're pretty high up there, about uh, 50 frames. So I'm just going to go ahead and drop a couple of quick traps here, and uh, from there we'll go ahead and bring on the horde, and we'll see what kind of our gameplay experience is going to look like. All right, guys, so here we're in the thick of the gameplay. Let's see if I can lure some of them over here towards my traps. You can see even there as we bring in some of the more visual effects that are from our, our alternate rifle. Um, you know, we were still keeping a great level of gameplay and fluidity. So this is definitely a fast-paced gameplay environment where you know you've got a lot of creatures on screen. You need to be able to move quickly around, and even at this high resolution, and even with all these dynamic effects going on, we're still overall averaging about a, a 45 to about a 50 plus frame rate. So once again, a really great experience, and you can say that uh, definitely from the increase that we're getting from GPU boost and the AMP memory, uh, that this is really actually helping us to give a playable gameplay experience here in Orcs Must Die. So let's go ahead and uh, jump over to uh, one more game. So we've gone ahead and jumped actually into one of my all-time favorite racers, um, which actually is a, still a gorgeous looking racer in terms of the level of detail, uh, draw, overall response uh, that's required in terms of how they created a lot of the physics engines and uh, the compositing and the mapping and, and the lighting in this game. And that's actually uh, uh, burnout Paradise City. So here uh, we've gone ahead and take a look at the display settings. So we've got it at 2560 by 1440. So we're going to go ahead and actually uh, jump into a, a race and uh, show you what the gameplay experience is like. But definitely make sure and keep your eyes locked there on the frame uh, the frame rate offered by Fraps. And uh, you're definitely going to see um, that uh, overall that the gameplay experience is, is really great. Uh, you know, overall, I found in my testing that uh, I was pretty much looking consistently at about uh, 60 frames in, in most exact in most situations. So you can see there, even with the quick cuts, uh, with the crashes, we're still getting a really smooth level of gameplay. And definitely for a racer, you need to be able to maintain a high level of uh, frame rate consistency to be able to ensure that really it doesn't hamper your gameplay experience. Especially when you're, uh, you're using a, a lot of boosts here and you want to keep things really fast and fluid. This is wrapping things up. Uh, hopefully we give you some insight actually into the different type of gameplay experience you could really actually have with this awesome Virgo platform and uh, specifically when taking advantage of a lot of the key technologies that we have on our F2A85 series of motherboards. You can really have a really outstanding gameplay experience as you showed. We had multiple games that we were playing at um, up to 2560 by 1440 as well as games that were playing at 1920 by 1080p and even other titles that we didn't show you there like uh, Shank um, or Alien Breed Impact and uh, tons of other titles, uh, you can really get a great gameplay experience uh, for users that are interested. Now, of course, this platform, you can definitely go ahead and throw on a discrete GPU. You could even actually take advantage of the Virtua MVP uh, and be able to combine the actual integrated APU graphics core with a discrete graphics card to be able to get even a better gameplay experience from that discrete card. But overall here, we just really wanted to give you some insight and some perspective into that you can have this awesome gameplay experience for you guys that maybe aren't necessarily always looking at uh, only AAA, you know, premier titles that you're 
you're going to have uh, require a bit more horsepower to be able to gameplay through. So overall with that, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys have any questions, comments, or feedback, we'd love to have them here on the page, so make sure to drop them there in the comment section. I'll do my best to get back to you directly. And also, you can make sure to hit us up at Facebook or Twitter, uh, which you'll see there in the links at the end of this video as well. And as always, if you guys enjoy the video, please make sure and subscribe.